Last spring we traveled to Fresno Unified to explain why it and similar districts with low property values and lots of low income families have such a hard time raising the money it takes to repair aging, decrepit schools. When he was running for governor, Gavin Newsom traveled a lot to the Central Valley and he agreed after touring schools to put this issue on his agenda. So when districts came to him to make the case for more state aid, he insisted that the formula for distributing state funding be changed. As a result, the state construction bond that will appear on the March ballot will give smaller districts a higher priority and give districts like Fresno Unified with low property values a somewhat bigger share of the state matching money. It will appear as Proposition 13, though it has nothing to do with the Proposition 13 that voters passed in 1978. Here's a summary of what will appear on the ballot. Of the $15 billion total, $6 billion will be divided among community colleges, CSU, and UC. $9 billion will go to K-12, with most of it for school renovations, and the rest for new construction, for charter schools, and career tech facilities. Districts with schools in dire condition will be at the front of a line for the K-12 portion. And so will small districts with too tiny a tax base to fund the work. Money will also be set aside to treat lead if it's found in school water. And property poor districts will get up to 5% more matching state money. It's not a huge difference, but a start towards more equitable funding. For more information, follow this link and go to edsource.org for continuing coverage of Prop 13. And now come with me to Fresno Unified while we see why change is needed. So here's our cafeteria and it was built in 1947 for a much smaller population. Uh, we really can't hold family events here in the cafeteria much larger than one grade level. We serve a population of 630 students, 100% free and reduced lunch. The other issue that we have in the cafeteria is there's no air conditioning and being from Fresno, it gets really hot here. Imagine having 200 students in there eating on a hundred plus degree day. It gets sweltering. We have a really persistent inequality of facilities between the richest California districts and the poorest districts in our state. I've worked from San Diego County up to uh, Reading and really was struck by the differences in the types of facilities and the conditions of facilities throughout the state and it's, it's made me uh, become an advocate for trying to find a way to create a more equitable system of funding. Fresno Unified is a, um, an older district. We've, um, our buildings, uh, in terms of the age of our buildings, our average age is about 55 years old. We also um, did have a facilities condition assessment completed two years ago, and that study showed over a billion dollars worth of need district-wide just to bring our schools up to the level that we would be considered good to meet all those needs in terms of the educational programs. I mean, we are the second most impoverished major urban in the United States, and far and away the most impoverished major urban in California, without a close second. Forty some odd percent, 46, I think, percent of our families, for a family of four, they make less than $25,000 annually. I mean, that's serious business. So their issues aren't all about new schools, right? Prioritizing the, um, the many needs that we do have is excruciating. And to think that our students um, live in those circumstances and deserve the, um, the facilities to be able to thrive and learn in a 21st century environment, and we just are unable to meet all of those needs, um, it's, it's a daunting task every day. A, a less wealthy district is often stuck dealing with how do I upgrade my basic fire alarm system? How do I upgrade my electrical system so that I can just get plugs in my buildings to support the projects that I need? We are very concerned about things like water pipes. This is an example of a water pipe that um, came out of a, a parking lot in an elementary school. We didn't expect 
those pipes to decay um, at this point, but when that happens, we have to direct funding to fix it. The site does a wonderful job of maintaining the campus, so it looks relatively nice, but it's a lot of those unseen items that oftentimes end up costing quite a bit uh, to either upgrade or replace. Well, Roosevelt is one of the um, original schools here in Fresno. We're the, the third school in Fresno Unified. Um, it uh, was built in 1928. There's a lot of history here. 90-year-old school is beautiful, but there are some drawbacks sometimes. We have four high schools that only have one gym, and it's a, it's a concern not only from a gender equity perspective, but also safety. We have kids practicing very early in the morning and late at night with limited gym space. Well, right now, we currently have to send our freshman and JV programs over to different sites or junior highs just to practice. Uh, makes it tough because we uh, can't get onto those sites until after 5.30 and having to transport kids from here to there make it very difficult. And part of the reason why some kids don't come out as freshmen for girls is because they would have to go at a later time and parents are reluctant to send their kids home at a later time in the dark. Well, our study for Getting Down to Facts took a comprehensive look at the last 20 years of school facility funding, both from local and state sources, uh, the districts across the state got. And what we found was that, particularly with regard to facility modernization or upgrading existing facilities, was that funding from the state to local districts was fairly inequitably distributed. That is, school districts with higher property values, higher median family incomes, and fewer poor children actually got more money from the state to upgrade their schools. And so when you've got you know, districts with multi-million dollars in property value per student versus districts that have maybe you know, tens of thousands of dollars per student. I mean, there's a very, diff very uh, different experience in those districts in terms of the ability to raise money. If they can't generate the local match, they can't go to the state to get the state funds that they need to do the modernizations. At current, the formula doesn't recognize to the degree necessary the funding disparities that occur, just even in the Valley, with all due respect, even with our adjacent districts. Clovis Unified's disadvantaged population is about 40%, whereas Fresno Unified's disadvantaged population is 89.5%. I envision a health center on our campus eventually. That would serve our community in a huge way. The, the family support networks in low-income schools are a critical component of educational success. A low-income district may not have the luxury of a, the space existing, or the ability to build the space to house a center like that. If the district had plenty of funding to build exactly the kind of school that we would like to build, that, that our students deserve, that our community needs, the school I would point to for us is Gaston Middle School. The middle school students in that area for 35 years were transported to middle schools in other parts of the district. They did not have a neighborhood middle school. It has additional green space that's lighted so the community can use the fields in off hours because there's a lack of parks in that area. It has a gym that's the size of a high school gym because that area needs places like that for the students and the community to access. It has um, a health clinic that serves the primary health care needs of the students. That's what, that's what you can do when you have the, the resources. Can't we find a formula that looks at both the property wealth and the household wealth and uses that in a way to provide additional resources where they're most needed for the less wealthy districts? One of the things we've been looking at is how all the other states do this. Two-thirds of the states um, fund school facilities and most of those states have a wealth-adjusted formula. That is, they look at property values or they look at student uh, socioeconomic status and they give funding based on those. So I think we as a state need to recognize that differentiation and institute a sliding scale funding formula that will try to remedy that problem so that all districts have you know, reasonable uh, opportunity to raise the dollars to fix up their school facilities. If there's anything that moved us toward a, toward a model where we took acknowledgement of those factors, Fresno Unified would be a huge beneficiary in that system.